My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, today we begin our prayer with a special joy. We know it's a joy for you and it's a joy for us to celebrate this feast of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because it's a feast of your mother and it's also a feast of our mother. And it's the feast, you could say, of her beauty, of her integrity. From ancient times, the feast of the presentation of Our Lady celebrates the tradition that Mary was presented in the temple and offered to God in the temple by her own parents, Saints Joachim and Anne. So it's the feast on which we celebrate Mary's total self-giving to God. But it's also, you could say, the feast on which we celebrate God's self-giving to Mary. We remember in the book of Revelation, the woman clothed with the sun. Mary is clothed with the sun, with the son of justice, who is Christ. True, Our Lady gives herself to God, but she receives God too. And it's that gift of God, that fullness of grace that makes Our Lady so ineffably beautiful, attractive, so winning for all of us, so full of love because she's full of God. Jesus, on this feast of of your mother, first of all, I just want to pay homage to her and to you. I want to give thanks for the greatest gift the human race has ever received. Apart from yourself, we receive the gift of your mother. And on this feast, when I remember how you enriched Our Lady so much with grace, with the very presence of God in her, clothing her with the sun, I too, Lord, would like to learn the the, the lesson, I guess, that insofar as I give myself completely to you, I receive you in return. And therefore, I can never outdo you in generosity. It's interesting to see the first reading for today's feast is from the prophet Zechariah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. See, I am coming to dwell among you, says the Lord. So it's the Lord who's coming to dwell among Mary, among the daughter of Zion. It's God who comes to Mary. True, Our Lady does say those wonderful words. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. And with that she ushers in the whole drama, the whole beauty of our redemption. But it's the Lord coming to her first. When you and I give ourselves to God and We can give ourselves to God right now in our prayer. We can make that intimate, personal, radical act of self-giving to God right now. God has already given himself to us. He has given us the grace to give ourselves to God. Those who give themselves to God lack nothing. They are truly rich. It's in giving that we receive. This is the great paradox of the Christian life that, Lord, sometimes I find so hard to really accept and really live out. That's why I ask today through the intercession of your mother on her feast, on the presentation, that I would learn that I would never lose in giving myself to you. I remember once being on a a work camp with a whole lot of university students and uh, they had worked very hard for a whole month in a very demanding social project, a lot of manual labor. 
a, a lot of uh, hours of work. And at the end, the local people who had benefited from the building they had made, which was a school, at the end of the, the work camp, after the month was up and the school was built, the local people got together and and delivered beautiful speeches and gestures and thanked the university students profusely, which of course is natural. But one of the students just leaned across and he said to me, I should be thanking them. I have received way, way more by what I've been doing through my work here. I received much more. The implication was precisely this, you know, it is in giving that we receive. We all get this experience when we give ourselves. And this is all the more case, all the more the case when we give ourselves to God. We think we're giving ourselves to God and we discover that he has given himself to us. How beautiful that is. And that's something that we see especially in Our Lady. And we consider it today on the feast of her, of her presentation. It's true that this is something that we have to grapple with because we do find it hard, actually, to give ourselves completely to God. At the beginning of his pontificate, when he was elected Pope, Benedict XVI, in the very first homily as Pope, he said, At this point, my mind goes back to the 22nd of October 1978, when Pope John Paul II began his ministry here in St. Peter's Square. His words on that occasion constantly echo in my ears. Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors for Christ. The Pope was addressing the mighty, the powerful of this world, who feared that Christ might take away something of their power if they were to let him in, if they were allowed the faith to be free. Yes, he would certainly have taken away something from them. The dominion of corruption, the manipulation of law, and the freedom to do as they pleased. The Pope was also speaking to everyone, especially the young. Are we not perhaps all afraid in some way? If we let Christ enter fully into our lives, if we open ourselves totally to him, are we not afraid that he might take something away from us? Are we not perhaps afraid to give up something significant, something unique, something that makes life so beautiful? Do we not then risk ending up diminished and deprived of our freedom? And once again the Pope said, No, if we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful and great. No, only in this friendship are the doors of life opened wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and liberation. This, surely, is one of the graces we could ask you, Jesus, on the feast of your mother's presentation, that we would discover that our self-giving to you in little things and in big things, the gift, Lord Jesus, of my life here and now, the gift of my effort to do your will today, um, that, is, that that is more than adequately recompensed, that I am paid back superlatively, that it is in giving that I receive. And insofar as we as human beings give ourselves to God in the little things and in the big things, we are enhanced, we are made great. The psalm for today's Mass is the Magnificat, where Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord. He has done great things in me. That's your call too. That's my call. That's the call of each one of us to give ourselves to God so that he can give ourselves to us and in and through us he gives himself to the world. How wonderful that is. Benedict XVI finished his homily saying With great strength and great conviction on the basis of long personal experience I say to you, dear young people do not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open, open wide the doors to Christ, and you will find true life. Amen.
I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.